which means as we speak, they're probably ringing the bell on the derby. If I'd been smart, I'd have made this about 15 minutes later because it's really fun watching horse racing with my ex-jockey husband. All right, but we are going to go ahead and get started. I have a very fun project for you today. I mean, I think it's fun. And I want you all to think really positive thoughts that I can actually make what I've made here today on camera without screwing up. Okay, so there you go. Hey, Rosie, appreciate you coming on. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and get started. So this is a gift set that I have made and I'm going to add to it tonight. Actually, I'm gonna make a second one tonight. And it uses the treasured kindness. Now this is what I would call a flyover set in the new catalog. All right, hey Marva, hi Mary and Faith and Sherry and Lorraine, appreciate you guys coming. Um, this is just, it, it, this is all it is, is a stamp set. It's a photopolymer set, but it's very, very serene. It's very organic and it's just cool. And it struck me when I first saw it. I don't know why. I've never made a bonsai in my life. I'm certain if I had one, I would kill it or it would turn out to be a 300 foot sequoia, which is not what bonsais are supposed to do. So like I said, I really don't know why this appealed to me so much, but it did. And once I started working with it, I'm really, really glad I got it. Okay, so I can tell you guys, I, I think you're gonna want this. The sentiments are great, the images are pretty, and it's a lot of fun. It's also part of my organic uh, beauty special bundle number nine, which is still available. So if you like what you see here today, you might wanna consider getting that. Hi, Brooke. Oh, thank you, Rachel, I appreciate that. Hello, Shirley, hi, Kathy, hey, Tara. All right, so this box, this is kind of an interesting thing. This is the new craft note cards and envelopes. You get 20 note cards and 20 envelopes, and you're gonna pull out this, and you're gonna be like, what in the world is this? Well, this becomes this, okay? And it's not impossible, but you're gonna maybe wanna watch the video a few times, and this is the part Y'all cross your fingers that I can do this. I've made a couple now, so I'm 86.5% confident I can do it on the first go on camera. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what I've done. So this is the new Old Olive and Sahara Sand Twill Ribbon Combo Pack. It is in the Happy Forest Friends Suite, and it's really lovely ribbon, okay? I mean, it's really very nice. It has a beautiful hand, and it ties very nicely. All right, so you're gonna want some of that. I have stamped the uh, bonsai and the sun. I believe it's a setting sun. I've just made that up right now. It might not be, it could be a rising sun. But I have stamped that on the front with one of the sentiments. The uh, We've got um, mossy meadow is our sentiment and then old olive and mossy meadow for the bonsai greenery, soft suede and crumb cake and then some pale papaya for the sun. All right, so then the cards I made, and this is a nice size box. You can see it's a pretty good size. I've only got three note cards in here right now. It would hold, I'll bet it would hold darn near the whole pack made into cards, okay? And I know you're gonna be amazed. Is everybody sitting down? There are no layers. There are no embellishments. There is the craft note cards and ink and stamps. That's it on this. I know, I know, it's cray cray. Tara, you do need it. It's really a beautiful set. So I made all three of these cards the same, and I've stamped the uh, bonsai image with thank you on the front, and then I put it on the inside. I really love that sentiment. Your kindness is treasured in my heart. I, I think it's beautiful. And then I just did, I uh, decorated the front of the envelope and used some of the new neutral DSP on the envelope flap. Okay, so I'm gonna show you, we're gonna actually make three cards and note card and envelopes, and then I will put the box together if, you know, God willing and the creek don't rise and I don't have a brain fart somewhere in there. Yes, hashtag simple stamping, I know. Who knew I would ever do such a thing? Alrighty, so I've got my cards, my card to base is here, the little note card bases. Now, I really like this, the, the craft paper, the craft paper, the six by six craft paper was not a favorite of mine. I didn't like the, the hand on it. I didn't like the weight, but this is nice. This is back to kind of, I want to say old school craft paper. Okay, so it's good thick paper and that is nice. And these are good little note card sizes. 
So really quite perfect for a thank you note, I think. And now you could do this stamping without folding it and you might be like, oh, that would be a whole lot easier. And yes, it actually could be. But if I do that, I will put something on wrong side up and on the wrong, it'll be not good. So I have to fold it just to keep my brain together. Now, if you wanted to make like 20 of these or 10 of these cards, I would absolutely take the time to, to set up your Stamparatus, even using the photopolymer sets, okay? Because that way you just go like that. But I'm only making three right here and it's a pretty simple thing to do. So we're gonna set up a bit of an assembly line. I've got my three envelopes already here. And so if I do this right, we will, we will just wheel our way through this like like a hot knife through butter. So I'm gonna take my pale papaya ink pad and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to stamp the sun image on all three of the card bases, inside and out. One. All right, you guys are like, oh my God, she's seriously, seriously gonna be doing all of these, we're never gonna get done. Did you see what I just did there? Did you by any chance notice what I just did? Who saw it? Who was paying close enough attention to see it? Oh, let me help you. I'll help you out. Yeah, that's what I did. I did that. I did that, but it's okay. No, who said they all have to be the same? Only I said it, and I'm now officially changing my stance on that. They do not have to be the same. At all. All right, so here's our note cards. And then while I have my pale papaya out, I will do my envelopes at the same time. And I am going, yes, I am going to open those up just to make it a little less likely that I screw up. Now, you know what's cool is you could do this exact same image, this exact same design with a very vanilla or a basic white card, and it would be almost exactly the same and yet look totally different, right? Because all the colors would be much more vibrant instead of the muted colors that we've got here. Okay, now before I do put that all away, I'll make sure that I have stamped front and back. I'm not saying that I have, you know, screwed that up in, in the past, but yeah, I have opened it up and found a half-made tree or something. Okay, so there we go. So I'll put pale papaya away. Hey, Amy. Hello, Mommy Roo. Uh, so welcome for your first, uh, your first live. I'm so glad you came. Okay, now I'm going to take the bonsai tree. I, that was me doing Japanese. Bonsai tree. And I'm going to stamp it over the sun in soft suede. Okay. So once again, we'll make sure that we're, you know, maybe doing it right or not. And we're gonna stamp it like that. And on the inside, it's okay. I mean, it's okay on all of them, but certainly on the inside, if it squeezes off of the edge, that's fine. And I'm gonna make it be so that the sunset is a little bit up near the top like that. Okay, so there's one card. And another card. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's card number two. N numero doso. Appreciate you coming, Amy. And we'll do on the inside here. And then we're going to do three envelopes. So you can see this really doesn't take very long. It might actually take longer using the Stamparatus, right? Because it just really might actually take longer using the Stamparatus. And this is a pretty forgiving image, which I said way too soon. I should have said that after I was done stamping everything. Okay, so there's the tree. I think I got them all. Now I'm going to take Mossy Meadow. 
there are two images for the greenery. You have the, um, this image you can see, I think, has more detail. And then you have this, which is the fill. So I'm going to do the detail image in Mossy Meadow. And you just want to line up, if you line up the bottom of this tree top right here with this branch, you're going to be pretty darn close. Okay, again, it's pretty forgiving, which we're about to test since I'm not getting over the top of it. But yeah, you can see it's pretty forgiving. All right, so now we're just going to stamp that a billion times or, you know, seven. But what I am going to do before I have a mistake, a mistake here, before I have a mistake. Hello, Betty. Hello, Lois. Appreciate you joining, guys. All right, there's that. And let's see, I should have another envelope. There it is, okay. I'm thinking this might be a nice Mother's Day gift for our, my friend tomorrow when we go to dinner. Maybe, possibly. Or maybe it'll just be the potato salad I'm taking. So you guys, today I made hard-boiled egg loaf in my Instant Pot. I had been wanting to try that. And I told my friend I would bring potato salad. And so, you know, that calls for chopped up, well, mine is going to, um, chopped up hard-boiled eggs. And I'd been seeing this recipe for making hard-boiled eggs like in a loaf. And it was super easy. I just put, I broke like seven eggs into a seven inch pan that I had anyway for my Instant Pot. And put it in on a sling and you cook it. It ended up being about seven minutes and it comes out you dump it out and you've got this loaf of hard boiled egg and you just chop it up and you can use it for potato salad or egg salad or anything else where you would need to have chopped up hard boiled eggs. Obviously it's not gonna work for deviled eggs, hello. And it's not gonna work for sliced hard boiled eggs, but you know, it's all good. It's all good and it was so easy and way easier even than peeling Instant Pot eggs, which is uh, about as easy as it gets. All right, one more. Let me pull it to me. I'm getting a little further away than I can see good. And get lined up. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to clean this because I have made just one heck of a... Hey, Sharon from your mom's house in New Mexico. And Lynn. And yes, Tara, my Instant Pot is possibly my favorite appliance ever. I actually have two of them. All righty. Now we'll do the second image. And I'm going to do, I don't know, Penny, they should be. They should be taking notes, right? Now I'm going to do stamped off once old olive. I tried it when I first made it. I, I did a test on my graph paper to see if I was going to like it. And the straight stamp, um, Straight old olive was just too dark. It lost the detail. But when you stamp it off and then go over the top, but I have to pull it to me, you guys. I'm sorry if it if it loses it for you. But you'll see it in just a second. It'll look a lot better lined up. But see how pretty that becomes when you use the stamped off once old olive? Never forget... Oh, I should do the front while I'm here. Never forget the power of stamping off. It gives you like it doubles your color choices, right? There we go. Wild upset. No, don't tell me. Don't tell me. I got to go back and watch it. Don't tell me. It's, you know, I, I've i kind of gone off of the horse racing thing. I just don't think it's a very great industry. Certainly not if you're the horse. Um, but it's very hard to not watch it when your husband is an ex-jockey. And it's a lot of fun watching with him because about halfway through the backstretch, he'll tell me who the winner's going to be. And nine times out of ten, he is correct because he can tell by how the jock is rolling and how the horse is doing. And so it's, it's fun. Hey, Debbie, yes, you do need this set. It's really, really cute. And like I said, it's a flyover. People are going to miss it. Um because it's kind of its own little thing. It doesn't have a die set and it doesn't have a real cool embossing folder and all those other things. So 
don't don't be the person who misses this because it's just really a nice little card. And it's perfect for making little thank you notes. I mean, seriously, these are perfect images. All right, don't fret, don't despair. We are getting to the end of it here. I'm down to the envelopes now. And then we'll be doing, I'll fill in the trunk and then I will fill in, I will do the sentiments and then I don't know. He he might have not been. I don't know. I, just tell. I just want one answer. Did anybody get hurt? That's all. That's really all I ever care about is that everybody gets across the finish line with all four legs under them, and no no horse ambulance had to go out on the track. That's really all I care about in the derbies in any of the races actually. Oh, good. Okay, thank you, Jean. Then I can watch it with impunity. Good. I remember once long ago when we were living in Delaware, I think it was a Breeders' Cup. It was one of the Breeders' Cup races for the, it was a distaff, so it was mares. And the mare went down, coming in the home stretch, and <clears throat> she didn't get back up. And that was hard. So, okay, so if I am correct, I have stamped all of the tree parts. I'm gonna add the trunk. There's a little trunk fill in. And I'm going to do that in crumb cake, but I want to experiment a little bit. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. Not, not a dimensional to be seen. I'm going to try this in stamped off once. Let, I'll show you how it looks in straight. And it just goes right over that. And you can see how that looks, which is pretty good. You really actually can still see the striations big word, I know, striations of the trunk, but I'm going to try it with stamped off once and see if I like it better or if I like it less better. Oh, I actually like it better, don't you? A little bit better? Not something hugely obvious, but it's kind of a cool thing, so I'm going to go ahead and do that with each one. Okay. I, I love this little image. I I just do. It's really, really cute. What have I got going on there? I've got something on my stamp. Got something on my stamp. All right. And it really is pretty darned easy to get everything lined up. Um, and it all fits together nicely. You know, sometimes even the best of dual stamping images they aren't always so easy to get lined up. Yes, it does look kind of like a bird. It also looks a little bit like a witch's hat to me. I mean, I didn't think that that's what it was because why would there be a witch's hat in a bonsai stamp set? But I, w I was like, oh, that's weird. But everything works together to bring all these little images down. And we're going to have one more little thing. It's got they even included a bonsai pot, a little bonsai dish, I think they would probably call it. And we're gonna do it in crumb cake as well. So we'll do that when we get done here. There, that's done. Okay, so let me clean this off because I, I got a little jiggy with the ink. And then, let's see, where's that other stamp? Oh, stamp. Oh, here we go. Okay, so you see this is, um, now, personally, I believe you could stamp it like this in the pale papaya, and it could be a sunrise. It could be the sun dipping. But if you stamp it like this in crumb cake, it becomes what I think it really was. You know what I'm saying. Uh, it becomes a little shallow dish which is what they grow bonsai thingies in, little shallow dishes. I know this because, you know, my dad did bonsai. I don't actually believe I have the patience for it. In fact, I'm quite, quite certain of it. All right, there we go. So it's not very hard. This is the kind of a project you could do watching the news in the evening, 
because it's an, it's a little it's a little mindless, which is nice sometimes. It's nice to be able to just relax and stamp and make pretty things without having to think so hard all the time, right? Okay. They do. They have way lots of personality, but I think it's it's very very dependent on the person doing the bonsaiing, and I'm not sure that. Like, I don't know that I could look at a tree and go, okay, well, this is what needs to happen to this tree to give it the personality that it should have. I'm like, you know, grow. Just grow. Do You do you, and I'll do me, and we'll be all good. Yeah. Thank you, Debbie. I appreciate knowing that. Okay, now we're going to do our front. Let's see, I've done all of the trees. I am going to put these envelopes where I can't inadvertently reach them or I will in fact stamp the sentiment on the envelope, which wouldn't be just horrible, but it's not what I meant. Okay, so we're going to do thank you three times. Kind of straight. This one's going to be on the wrong side, but that's okay. And then we'll tr um, that one goes on the lid, and then we're gonna stamp. That's the tree. Okay, here we go. Then on the inside, we're going to stamp our second sentiment. As straight as I can make it, which may or may not be straight. We'll see. See, that's, I'm pretty sure that's what I would do too, Linda. I would kill, if I didn't kill them, they would end up looking like a, like a monster tree. People would be like, what in the world were you thinking? And I'd be, I don't know, man. I don't know. About the level of my pruning and taking care of stuff is cutting off, um, <laughs> cutting off sucker branches on tomatoes. That's about my speed. Speaking of which, the garden is going great guns, my goodness. It's it, like one day I didn't go out there and it's gone crazy. Okay, so in case you weren't paying attention, the, uh, the uh, what am I trying to say? The note cards are done. So we have three note cards. And the envelopes, I'm going to use some of this uh, DSP on each of the flaps. Now, I did not have a second piece of my striped, but I thought, you know, that's okay. I like, I like plaid. I like this one, but I'm going to, I'm going to use the dots because I've got stripes and dots in my little set. I'm going to turn it this way. I'll put all three on, and then I can trim them all. And then, hey, Tara, that's okay. That's okay. You can watch it. You can watch it after. It'll be all right. Actually, if you've seen me do one of the cards, you've seen me do all of the cards because that's how this set went. And you are in time for my live attempt to make the box. And yes, I had not noticed that there was a box with this either until I opened the uh, the package the other day and I was like, what in the world is this? And then I went and read again and yes, it's a box to hold your little note cards, which I think is pretty stinking cool. Now, I'm just gonna tell you straight up and I wanna manage expectations. I have zero intention of attempting to make that bow again. Okay, just not going to do it. I, I, I'm all fingers, all thumbs, all hands. It's not good. So you're just going to have to make your own bow. You're going to have to wrap your own gift because I ain't doing it. Not on camera because I might, you know, say a bad word or something when it doesn't do what I like it to do. All right, so we'll just give this a quick cut around and then our note cards will be done and then dun 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 we'll try to make a box now i have to give credit where credit is due 
I was able to figure out the bottom of the box, the box itself, but for some reason, the lid bamboozled me. And so I <laughs> handed it to Wayne, and I said, can you figure this out? And he said, sure. And I said, and then can you teach me how to make it? And he said, sure. So, so that's what we did this evening, was he taught me how to make it. And so then I made a couple more. I've got a couple of packages because of my shares. And so I made a few. Now, just to manage expectations, if you ordered a share, you are going to get the note card in the envelope, but you will not get a box. But you will know how to get how to make the box when you decide you need your own package. And it comes with it. You won't be like, what in the world is this? Oh, wait, I know. I can go look back at that video, and Mary will show me how to make it. Okay, there we go. Three note cards, three envelopes, lickety split. Seriously, 25 minutes to do that, and that was with a lot of yakking. If you hit hit a lick and just start making cards, you'll be good to go. Okay, so let me go ahead and set this aside. Here is my first tip for making this. The first thing I think is important is, if you intend to decorate the lid, I highly recommend that you do it before you put it together. In fact, I'm going to just insist upon it because it will not be an easy thing to do. Now, the good news is, is there's really no way you have to do it. So I'm going to roll through this. I'm not going to talk very much. Well, I probably will because I can't help myself. I'm a talker. Okay, let's just face it. I'm a talker. All right, so let's put our sun. We're going to go right in the middle here. And then we're going to do our tree in soft suede. And now this makes me think of a dojo. <laughs> I feel like we're making a dojo. <laughs> hey, Karen, appreciate you coming. All right. And then we're going to put on some mossy meadow treetops. Little tiny treetops, the bonsai type. Okay. And then we'll use some old... Oh, wait, you know what? Let me go ahead and put my sentiment on while I have that out. Hang on just a second. I'm going to use this one. Good friends are forever. I'm going to stamp it right there. Like that. Oh, I didn't see that, but I have to, I'm have to. i going to have to watch. That looks funny. All right. Let's go ahead and put our old olive tree toppers on. And again, we're going to go ahead and stamp off. Mm-hmm. Sure. Wayne was funny because when we, we were putting the box together. He said, do you have any double-sided tape? And I said, well, I have tear and tape adhesive. And he goes, yeah, that'll work. It's double-sided, right? I said, yeah, it's double-sided. So we put a piece on and he went to try to get the cover off and he didn't have any fingernails at all. And he's like, don't you have your tape runner thing? <laughs> I said, couldn't we find something easier? <laughs> I said, this will be fine. It'll be good. It's all good. And the truth is, is I actually believe you can make the the lid and the box for certain you can make without using the um, any adhesive. And everything will stay together just fine without using any adhesive. But it gives you a bit of an advantage when you can hold some things in place. Okay, so there is our decorated lid. You ready to go? And what? Now, come on, man. All right, so this is the lid, and the, the, two fold, the two things fold pretty much the same way, okay? So we'll start with this one. What you're going to do is you're going to start out by making your folds, and they fold like opposite, okay? So you're folding up, and then the second one you fold opposite, like that. And then the third one, the one that's got the holes in it, you fold back on itself. Okay? And then you pretty much do the same exact thing all the way. Okay? So in, forward, and then back towards you. 
Okay, now, just to help you out in slow motion. And and back. And forward and back. Okay. Now, like I said, you could actually make this without using any adhesive, but it will make your life much easier if you do, I promise. Here we go. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of tear and tape, and we're going to put tear and tape to hold this flap down. And you don't need a whole lot because it's really sticky. Okay, and then we're gonna fold it down like that. And we'll do the same be sure I'm doing the right ones, yeah. Uh, yeah. Now I'm going to wait on that one just to be sure. All right, and then we'll do the same here, like so. The This is not really terribly difficult, but it it does feel a little bit like you need an extra hand. So that is what the adhesive does for you. Okay, so just to keep, if you're paying attention to what's going on here, we're fixing to roll this all up like this, and this is gonna be coming down like so, and then that's gonna lock into place, okay? So let's get these rolled in so that they will go where they belong. And I'm gonna put a piece of tear and tape right here, and you just want it about an inch and a change long. Here we go. Like that. That is an inch and change. Do not make me prove it. All right, we'll take this off. And then we're going to roll this up and roll this down over those tabs. Can you see what I'm doing there? Where I'm, the tabs are now tucked in like that. And then I'm going to let that lock down in place and hold in place with the tear and tape adhesive. Like I said, you can do this without the tear and tape, but it is way easier with it. Way. Orders of magnitude. All right. And then we'll put another little piece here just to help us out and do the same. Now this time what's going to happen is we're going to roll this down and tuck that in like without bending all of that, preferably. I'm gonna tuck that in like so, and then those little tabs right here are gonna fit in those little slots right there, okay? Now, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do, just because I can, because it's paper, and I'm just gonna make it do what the heck I want it to do. Also, I've bent that a few times now. So, you don't have to do that. If you get a good a good bend over on the first go, you won't need to do that. Okay, so you wanna make sure that when you pull it down, you pull it right down flat so that you've got a nice square. And then you can just kind of push that down in and you can see how it locks in. So like I said, you can do this without adhesive. Highly recommend that you actually do it with adhesive. Ah, ha, ha, Tara, yes. The change actually makes it a little bulky, but it works out because it makes it sturdier. Okay, so let's try the same exact go with this, the box. And it's, again, it's the same fold. It just, it does look different because the tabs are so much different looking. Okay, but I promise it's the same. So you're going to go forward and forward and back like so. Forward, forward, back. Forward, forward, and back. Okay. And you can give it a little burnish. Sorry, we're going a little long today, guys. I apologize. Okay. And then we'll tuck our tabs in. And we're gonna make this flap like we did before. 
I don't know. It it is not. It is, the thing about it is, is it is really not terribly intuitive. I, I'm going to say that it is. You know, we were when we were on the phone the other day. I was able to get the box together, but the the for some reason, even though the lid actually is the same exact thing, it just it just my brain couldn't see it. So now you guys will have the video to refer back to when you make this. Because actually this little note card set is very, very cool. Very cool. Okay, so we've got it starting to come together. You got your sides. And then we're gonna do the same here. And we're gonna tuck these tabs in when we close it down, okay? I mean, it's really quite clever. The box is quite clever, but like I said, it, if, if you can't see it, then it might be harder. Okay, so the only trick here is you, when you put this down, you want everything as squared up as you can get it, okay? So pull it right back and tuck it in. It all locks very nicely, really. Um, you can see how it's, how it's all locked up there. You can see it's already pretty locked in. There's no adhesive there, but that just stays down. But when you use the tear and tape, you got yourself, a, you got yourself going, you got yourself cooking with gas. All right. I know, Mary, I'm hoping that that will come out. Um, yeah, I'm hoping that will come out. Okay, so what's gonna happen here is we're gonna bring this up and we're gonna tuck those tabs in and catch it with that fold. And then that's gonna tuck in just like the other one. Don't do that yet. You can see the little the little slots right there, right? All right, so like I said, you don't need any large amounts of tear and tape. But when you come up, and if you don't make the tear and tape too long, then you've still got play with your tabs. If you make it come clear out to here, as soon as you touch it, then your tabs are gonna quit moving and adjusting for you, which you don't want. You don't, nobody wants non-movable and adjustable tabs. Nobody. Nobody wants that. Okay, so when you get ready to bring this in, you want everything as square as you can get and then tuck it right down against the, the side. And then you can just use your thumbs and give that a little push. And there you go. One each box, baby. Boom! Boom! And then these go in perfectly, like so. Again, I think you could get six or 10 of those in here very easily, or all 20. And like I said, I am actually not going to, um, not gonna do the ribbon bow, because you know, that's just too hard. Also, it's already 740, and I've kept you guys long enough. So I hope you've enjoyed this. I really, really hope you'll get Treasured Kindness. If not in my special bundle, which is really awesome and has a lot of other great stuff in it, then at least by itself so that you have it to play with and to make lovely little thank you cards with. And don't forget the craft note cards and envelopes with the box. All right, guys, thank you so much. I appreciate you. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And anybody who wants to come sit with me and make boxes, y'all come. I'm ready. See ya. Ta.